You're listening to the Weekly Parsha Podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramah Pitch Hamish Israel 5777, 2016. This week's Parsha is Parsha Schaye Sara, and we start off the Parsha speaking about the life of Sara, the passing of Sara Imenu, our matriarch, and the verse tells us, chapter 23, verse 1, Vayiyu Chaye Sara Mea Shana, the Esrim Shana V'Sheva Shanim, the life of Sarah was 127 years, Shnei Chaye Sarah, these were the years of the life of Sarah. And the verse goes on to tell us how Sarah passed on, and describes the whole scene as Avram Avinu, as Abraham, mourned for her, and went through the process of purchasing the cave of Machpelah in Hebron in order to bury her there. Now, the Medrash gives us a very unusual connection between the 127 years of the life of Sarah and somebody else. And it's somebody who we met, actually, in last week's Parsha, and we saw that there was a connection, a very deep connection, an important connection, between Sarah and Esther Hamalka, the Queen Esther. I'd like to explore that more. I'd like to try to understand better exactly what is this connection, what is the idea behind it, and what can we learn from it. The measure says like this, Rabbi Kiva Yoshev Rabbi Kiva was sitting, and he was saying a drasha, he was saying a speech, Vinis Namnu Tamidim. And the students who were listening to his speech, they were dozing, they fell asleep in the middle of his speech. And we had another medrash, a similar medrash, which speaks about this kind of similar idea. So the rabbi is saying a drash, he's saying his speech, and everyone's falling asleep. So what does he do? Bala, ara, yasayin, he wanted to wake them up. So he said something unusual that would surprise them, that would wake them up. What was it? Omar, ma zachta esther lemleich al sheva ve'esem medina. What was it that gave the merit to Esther Hamalka, Queen Esther, that she should be able to rule, she should be the queen over 127 provinces. Elakach Amra Kodesh Borchu. God said as follows: Tavoy Esther, Bita Shal Sarah, let Esther, who was the great great granddaughter of Sarah, our matriarch, Shechoisa Sheva Vesem Umeir Shana, she lived to be 127 years old. Vetimlech Al Sheva Vesem Umeir Medina, and let her great granddaughter Esther rule over 127, the same number. 127 provinces. And the obvious question here is, what is the Medrash trying to tell us? So Rabbi Akiva was saying this as a joke, or he was saying this in order to say something surprising, in order to awaken them. But when Rabbi Akiva says this teaching, obviously there's a deeper meaning to the teaching. There's a deep connection between Sarah Imenu and Esther. We previously spoke about the fact that there was a connection, and we said that there was a point of redemption when Esther was coming in to become the queen, so the Jewish people were being redeemed. And we said that also when, when Yitzhak was born in last week's Parsha, so there was a point of redemption for the Jewish people. There was a new spiritual thing that was coming into the world. But here the problem is that we're talking about 127 years of the life of Sarah. That means that this is the end of her life. It's not really a point of new spirituality for Sarah Imenu. It's a point of her passing. It's a point of the end of her life. So how are we to understand the connection between Sarah Imenu and so far as her 127 years of a life, at the end of her life, and Esther Hamalka, Queen Esther, who became the queen and thereby became the one who would represent the Geula, the redemption of the Jewish people. What is the connection between these two parshas, these two concepts? Now the Eitz Yosef, in his Sefer Anaf Yosef, in his explanation, in the, in the, the same Medrash appears both in our parsha and in the Medrash in, in uh, Esther. And so the Eitz Yosef explains, he brings an explanation to understand the connection between Sarah's 127 years and Esther's 127 provinces. What is the concept? What is the connection? Why, because of Sarah, how does Esther have this merit? What is the t- deeper teaching of the Medrash? So he brings another medrash. This medrash is back in Parshas Lech Lecha in regards to the verse that says that Abraham left Avram ben Shivim v'chamei Shanim. He was 75 years when he left and he headed on his journey towards the land of Israel. Hado d'chsiv. So we find that there is another person. Avram Avinu is somebody who represents Geula. He represents a new stage in the spiritual realm of the Jewish people. But there's someone else. And this is again this connection between Avram and Sarah and Esther Hamalka. She also was someone who represented Geula. And the measure says something fantastic. He Esther. The verse refers to Esther Hamalka, to Queen Esther, with another name. Her name was also Hadassah. Now the Medrash tells us that there's a three-way argument as to how old she was when she became the queen of Ahasuerus. Rav Omar, Rav says, Bas Memhoi says she was 40 years old when it happened. 
Shmuel Aimer. Shmuel says, Bas Shmoinim Shana. She was actually 80 years old when she was taken to become the queen. Rabban and Amri, Bas Shivim V'chamisha. Our sages say that she was 75 years old. And where does this number 75 come from? Notice that Avram Avinu was also 75 when he left from Choran to go to the land of Israel. So, Rebrechi B'Shem Rabbanon, the Tamon, Omar, Rebrechi said in the name of the rabbis of Tamon, Omar HaKadosh Baruch Hu Avraham. God said to Abraham, You left your house at the age of 75. I promise you that in the future there's going to be a redeemer. And it's a reference to Esther, who's going to come from you, who's going to be a great grandchild of yours. She's going to be 75 years old, just like you are. And if you take the gematria, the numerical value of the name of Hadassah, the numerical value comes out to 74. And in gematrias, for a reason that we have discussed, I'm not going to get into right now, you can always add another one for the value of the word itself, because the word is, has the kola, which is the all-inclusive aspect. So 74 plus 1 is 75. So her name was Hadassah, representing the fact that she was 75 years old when she became the queen of Ahasuerus, when she opened the door for the geula of the Jewish people, for there to be a redemption for the Jewish people. Now when we hear this message, we say, how could this possibly be? How could it be that Ahasuerus married, as the, as the Megillah describes, this most beautiful woman, she was more beautiful than any of the other women in the entire kingdom. She was 75 years old. So the Nav Yosef says an amazing pshat, which is very difficult to understand. We need to understand the depth of the teaching of the Anaf Yosef, what, he, what he's trying to teach us, what the depth of it is. But he says that Esther Hamalka, at the age of 75, experienced something similar to what Sarah Imenu experienced at the age of 90. Just like in last week's Parsha, we saw that Sarah, at the age of 90, became young again, and she was able to conceive and have a child, and she was able to nurse that child. And, and to the point where, before she even gives birth to that child, she's stolen because she's so beautiful. King Avimelech tries to take her to be his wife. She's 90 years old. We see that she went back to a state of youth. She went back to that, to that young state. So too Esther Hamalka. Even though she was 75 and she had gotten old, she went back to a state of youth and she became beautiful again as she had been in her younger years. The result of this was that she was taken to the palace and she became the queen of Ahasuerus. Says the Anaf Yosef. That's the meaning of the Medrash when it says that Sarah Imenu, who lived for 127 years, she was connected to Esther and Esther was Zoch, she merited to become the queen over 127 provinces. Why? Because both of them experienced a parallel miracle. Sarah became youthful again and Esther became youthful again. And as we hear this fantastic Medrash, we, we have to understand that the question it just begs to be asked. Why is it, or what's the Medrash teaching us when it tells us that these two great women in becoming old and becoming youthful again were the vehicles for an amazing miracle in the birth of Klal Yisrael and also in the Geula of Klal Yisrael, in the redemption of Klal Yisrael. And again, I want to reiterate the question that we asked before, which is that here we're speaking about her death. We're speaking about the end of her life, 127 years she lived. And yet, we seem to be connecting it to Sarah becoming young again and Esther becoming young again. What is the idea here? What is the depth of this teaching of our Chazal? So before we answer these questions, I want to share with you two more important points that have to do with the death of Sarah Yimenu, of our matriarch Sarah, that are connected to the previous Parsha. At the very end of last week's Parsha, we had the story of the Akedah, we had the description of the events of Avram Avinu being commanded by God to bring his son Isaac as a korban, as a sacrifice. He binds Isaac, and then Hashem says, no, I don't want you to do it, I want you to stop. And then after that, so they return, but in between that parsha and our parsha, there's a little footnote, so to speak, which speaks of the birth of Rebecca, of Rivka Imenu. So we have that, and then we have our parsha, which speaks of the death of Sarah Imenu. And what is the connection? So our Chazal tell us, the sages say, that it was a result of the fact that Sarah Imenu saw, she was given a vision of the fact that Avraham was tying up Yitzchak. He was going to sacrifice him. Because Sarah had the vision of what was going on, she passed on from the world. Now, there's a small problem with this connection, as I saw brought down. And the problem is that the story of the birth of Rivka is right in between. 
usually we, we're Darish Smuchim. If you have two different parshas, two different ideas or concepts that are right next to each other in the Torah, so you can explain there's a connection. But there's a problem because there's something in between the story of that Kate of the binding and the story of the death of Sari Imenu, and that is the birth of Rivka. So what is being taught here? What is the concept here? The Rabbeinu Bachai gives an awesome understanding to what's going on. What's the connection between the Akedah, the birth of Rivka, and the death of Sarah Imenu? And the answer is that there are two important points here. One is that by the fact, or through the self-sacrifice of Avram and Yitzchak, that they were ready, Yitzchak was ready to give up his life. Abraham was willing to give up the life of his son, who he knew was meant to be the progenitor of the Jewish people. That self-sacrifice made it possible for a Rivka to be born, for Rebecca, who would be the mother of the Jewish people henceforth. She was brought into existence because of that self-sacrifice. Now, what happens on the other end? What's the connection between Rivka's birth and, and the death of Sari Imenu? So our Chazal tell us, the sages say, that there's a concept of Vizara HaShemesh Uba HaShemesh, which means that the sun shines, the sun rises, and the sun sets. Chazal teaches us that this means that the depth of the, of the teaching of the verse is that there is no such thing as a tzaddik who passes from the world without someone who's going to be as great as that tzaddik, that righteous individual who's come into the world and been born before the death of the previous tzaddik. Sorry, Menu can't die before Rivka is born. And there are certain things that represent the greatness of Sari Imenu. And this I'll read you from the Rabbeinu Bachai, where he quotes from our sages, our Chazal. Our sages said about Sarah, As long as Sarah was alive, She had a special candle that would burn from one Friday to the next Friday. It would last miraculously the whole week. And there would be clear blessings on the dough. Vanan kosher ala ohel, and there was a there was a cloud which represented the shechina, which represented the divine presence, which would hover above her tent. Ukeshamei when she passed away, it went away. But as is brought down in the, in the mafarish here on the Rabbeinu Bachai, but when Rivka came, as Rashi tells us on the psukim on the verses, so those things returned again. There was a, a candle that was lasting from week to week. Again, there was blessings on the dough, and again, there was the divine presence which could be seen upon her tent. So we see, in a certain sense, that although Sari Mano passed away, there was a new matriarch, and her name was Rivka, Rebecca. She was already born into the world. And so one sun was setting, but another sun was rising. Now here's the depth of it. The depth is that just like when it came to Yitzchak Avinu, his self-sacrifice, his willingness to give up his life, although he didn't have to do it, but his willingness to go there, to be sacrificed for God, that opened up the possibility for Rivka to be born, for Rebecca to be born. So it also made something, there was something else, there was another place where there was an opening that was a result of a loss. And that was Sarah Imenu's passing. There was a setting of the sun, but the setting of the sun, the completion of her life, the 127 years of her life, we're actually opening up the possibility for there to be another great person, a Rivka Imenu, a Rebecca, who would indeed carry on the legacy of Sara Imenu, of a Sarah. But it's not a coincidence that it's happening right here. It's happening right here because they're connected. Because we lost Sarah somehow, whatever that means, whatever the depth of it is, we'll get to it soon. But because we lost Sara Imenu, so we gained Rivka Imenu. And Rivka is really just a continuation. And it's very interesting. I shared with you a few weeks ago the fact that there were coins that were minted in Abraham's honor. And on one side was an old woman and an old man. And on the other side, there was a Bachar Basula, a young man and a young woman. And we spoke about the fact that according to one opinion, the young man and the young woman were also Abraham and Sarah. But there's another opinion. And that is that the young woman and the young man were Yitzchak and Rivka. And according to what we're seeing, it comes out beautifully because it's really both. Because Yitzchak, in a certain sense, was a continuation of the mission of Avram Avinu. And Sara Imenu, her continuation was through Rivka. But what's amazing here, what's really cool, is that there's a parallel between the fact that Sara Imenu becomes old and then becomes young again, which is represented by this young woman on the coin. And the fact that Sara Imenu dies and she passes from the world 
and there's a new person who takes her place, so to speak, who continues her legacy, and that's a Rivka. Because both of these ideas are true and parallel each other. Now, there's a point that we spoke about and really, really needs understanding. And it's amazing because we find that by Sarah Imenu, she, after she became young again, she was taken again to a king, to Avimelech, to become his bride, so to speak, because she was so beautiful. We find that it's also true of Esther, as we spoke about, because she became the queen of Achashverosh. And amazingly, we find that it's also true of Rivka. It's also true of Rebecca, that she also is taken, because of her beauty, to become the queen of Avimelech. And what is the idea here? What is the depth of the fact that the Torah is telling us, teaching us this idea about these three great women. And this, I believe, comes to the core of the depth of the idea of what we're trying to say here. And that is that when, think about it, Esther HaMalka, she's a great tzaddikas. According to our Chazal, she was married to Mordechai. She was an HSC. She, she was the wife of the God Hador, the greatest man of the generation. And she is taken to become the queen of Achashverosh. She loses her Jewish identity. She loses all that she holds, holds dear. It's forbidden for a Jewish woman to marry a non-Jew. And yet, that which seems like death, that which seems like the end, that which seems like the end, for example, of Sarah Imenu's life, that which seems like the end of Esther's spiritual life, somehow Hashem uses that end for a different type of beginning, for a geula, for the Jewish people. And in a parallel way, the Jewish people were standing after 70 years of Golis, after 70 years of exile. And it seemed like they had lost their, their relationship with Hashem. There had been a prophecy that the Jewish people would return to the land of Israel after 70 years. And yet, 70 years had seemed to pass. And it seemed like the Jewish people were forlorn. They had become too old, so to speak, and God didn't want them anymore. It seemed like we passed the point of no return. And yet, just like... Esther became young again, even after she had become old. And Sarah Imenu became young again, even after she had become old. The Jewish people seemed to have become old and been rejected by God. But miraculously, just as Esther was returned to her youth, and Sarah Imenu was returned to her youth, and they were able to become part of a Geula, the Jewish people also were returned to that youthful state of relationship between themselves and God. They were able to do tshuva, they were able to repent, and come back into a relationship with Hashem and become young again. So we look at the death of Sarah Imen and we say, oh, it's all over. She's passed on from the world. But it's very interesting because when we speak about her death and we speak about the death of the righteous ones, we speak about their lives. We speak about how long they lived. We speak about the 127 years of her life. And the reason is because the completion of their life, when they come to the end of their life, where they seem to have lost that relationship with life and with more opportunities... It's not the end. It really is the beginning. It's the beginning of the next generation. It's the beginning of a new relationship that's going to be formed between a Yitzhak and a Rivka. And just like when, when Sari Imenu goes back to that state of youth, she becomes young again and she's able to have a child. She's able to be manic that child, to, to nurse that child. Just like there's a renewal that occurs in her own life. Even in her death, there's a renewal that occurs as the Jewish people continue. And as a new woman takes over for her, Rivka comes and she takes over and that tent becomes a new place. Or really it's a place where there's a renewal of what was happening before. And it's a continuation and it's also a result of the life, the great life of 127 years that Sarah Imenu lived. And that same 127 years, that sacrifice that she made, the life that she lived of greatness, not only did it make it possible for a Rivka to be born, for a new son to rise, but it also made it possible that many hundreds of years later, there would be another great-granddaughter of hers that would be born, who it would seem that her life would be over, that her spiritual life would be over. But in fact, it would be the beginning of a new life. And she, like Sarah, would go from a state of being old to being young. Now this is something that we see in the moon. The moon is that which represents the Jewish people's relationship with Hashem. The first commandment the Jewish people receive as a nation is to count our calendar by the moon. And the moon goes through these cycles. In the middle of the month, the moon is full, it's bright, it's shining. The Jewish people shine most brightly in the middle of the month. That's why many of our holidays are in the middle of the month. The holiday of Purim is also Pesach, Sukkot. But as the moon wanes, it gets smaller and smaller until it disappears. 
But it doesn't disappear and then it's gone. It disappears and then it starts to build again. And it returns. And it's this cycle. You know, in our lives, we, we experience these things. We experience times where we have more of a relationship to God, where it's more clear that Hashem is in our lives. Or we're more committed to our relationship with Hashem, our relationship to spiritual things. And there are times where we lose that commitment, or we lose that connection, or it feels like it's gone. But the message of our parsha, the message, message of Sari Imenu, the life, the 127 years of her life, the message of an Esther Amalka, and the fact that she became old and she became young again, and the fact that there was what seemed to be a loss to the Jewish people, and it was, there was a renewal and a redemption. The message for us is that we need to always realize and recognize that our life is cyclic. That there are times when we have those relationships and they're deep and they're clear and they're obvious. And there are times when it's weaker and it seems like we're losing it. But just like a Yitzhak of, you know, Isaac, when he lost it, it seemed that he was ready to sacrifice his life. He was ready to give that up. It opened up the possibility for a Jewish people to come into reality, for a Rivka to be born. And just like a Sarai Menu, when she passes from the world, it opens the space for a Rivka to come into the world. So it is in our lives. And when we experience things that are challenges or difficulties or even a loss of relationship with Hashem, it's really an opening and an opportunity for an even deeper relationship with Hashem, which is to come. I want to bless you. Please bless me back. Hashem should help us to use these opportunities to recognize that there are ups and downs in our lives. And Hashem should help us to be restored to that place, even when it seems like we've become old in our relationship with Him. Hashem should help us to feel young again and to recognize that it's never too late. And that we always have a chance to become beautiful in spiritual terms and enter back into a relationship. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.